Hey, how you doing, VC? This is Alex coming at you again. It's been a little while. Been pretty busy, as a lot of you guys, I'm sure, are. Uh, just figure I'd show you a few uh, records I've been uh, enjoying over the last few months. We'll uh, start off with uh, a little can, 1977 release, Saw Delight. This is a uh, UK first pressing on Virgin. Uh, most of the tracks are, you know, later can. Definitely not. Not their best work, but there's a track, 20 minute, uh, sorry, 15 minute track on side two, uh, Animal Waves, that is absolutely worth the price of admission. Uh, the late uh, Jackie Leibazite, the drummer, is in top, top form. Uh, definitely, definitely recommended. Uh, another band pretty well known in the VC, Henry Cow. Uh, I think there's three in the Sock Cover trilogy. For me, this is my favorite. Uh, 1973, uh, this is the first pressing on, on Virgin. Um, mostly instrumental, I think that's why I like it most. Uh, there are some vocals on the last track, I think, but uh, the drumming especially stood out to me. Very good stuff. Start off with the uh, jazz records here. Albert Eiler, my name is Art Albert Eiler. Uh, it's recorded in uh, early 1963. Uh, so he must, uh, I think Albert would have been pretty, pretty young, probably early 20s. Um, probably not much appreciated in the, in the U.S. at the time, since he was, uh, you know, so way ahead of his time. Um, this one was recorded in, uh, Copenhagen with some, uh, European players, uh, Neil Bronsted on piano, Niels Henning Orsted Peterson on bass, uh, Ronnie Gardner on drums, who I think is American. Um. I think, Metal Theologian, you had this playing in the background on one of your videos. You were playing uh, Summertime, the track on, uh, last track on the first side, and it was pretty uh, amazing. So I had to go out and, and find it. There's a uh, early Japanese pressing on uh, Trio. Really good stuff. Uh, another excellent saxophonist, uh, maybe lesser known, Julius Hemphill. Um, I think uh, Derek Higgins played the 20-minute uh, track, The Hard Blues, on his uh, radio show recently. Uh, he had me absolutely mesmerized. I had to go out and, and look for it. Uh, luckily, I mean, as most of, with most of these Arista the Freedom records, it's pretty affordable and available still. Um, excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, Julius plays the uh, alto saxophone, I think, on this one. Max Roach, Anthony Braxton, need no introduction. Uh, this is from 1978 on uh, the Italian free jazz label, Black Saint. Um, I, was, I knew it was going to be good, obviously, with these two guys, but uh, it really exceeded expectations. It, was, it's, it really is one of my favorite uh, Anthony Braxton recordings. Uh, brilliantly recorded, uh, amazing interplay uh, between the two. Uh, great little quote on the back here. It says, uh, the music in this album is a result of our belief in a continuum that links the present with the past. Our spontaneous improvisations are true to those well-defined principles basic to African-American culture. Thank you for listening. Highly recommend it. Another amazing group here with, you know, anchored by Max Roach. You got Ellington on piano, Roach on drums, and Mingus on the bass. Uh, definitely, if you haven't heard of this, check it out. This kind of a different cover than, uh, you know, the first pressing and, and later represses. This is an early repress on uh, Solid State Records, which I'm not real familiar with. Um, title track is off the charts, you know, the, the pinnacle of sort of post-bop and, you know, the interplay between these three is, is ridiculous. Now on to some, uh, newer stuff. Finally got around to getting Kamasi Washington's The Epic. Um, you know, I had been listening to this for a while on Spotify. Uh, finally got around to, uh, to buying this, um, you know, unfortunately, the record label Brain Feeder didn't do a very good job on the pressings. I went through 
three different copies uh, through Amazon. Uh, they all had some degree of surface noise. Um, you know, if you look on Discogs, it does look like uh, they had some quality assurance issues on the pressing. Uh, still, pretty excited to uh, to have this. Um, you know, this guy is, is a real talent. If, if you haven't uh, heard it yet, if you're a latecomer like I am, find him. And uh, he's a, a local here from uh, Los Angeles, uh, as most of these musicians are. So, very excited to uh, to find this one finally. Uh, some 2017 releases. This is a, a one-man noise artist by the name of Pharmacon. Uh, she's from New York. This is her third full-length album. Uh, all three have been on uh, Sacred Bones. Uh, I take that back. She might have had one. Her very first one might have been on a different label, but uh, her last three have been on Sacred Bones. All three very, very much worthwhile. Um, this is, as the cover would indicate, uh, not not for everybody. Um, this is pretty harsh stuff. Um, you know, in a way, I would kind of compare them to Kurt, uh, to Scott Walker's, you know, 90s records. Not so much musically, but just in the, the raw uh, discomfort, I think, that, that is... Um, inherent to the music um and you can see it you know if you youtube her live shows you, you kind of get an idea she interacts with the crowd a little bit i mean she you know she she's very much about laying it all out both you know on record and, and in live settings very unique artist uh definitely worth checking out pharmacon on the excellent sacred bones label this one just came out a few months ago, or a few weeks ago, even. Um, this is a band that uh, I've known about for a while, and I uh, finally got around to checking them out. This is uh, their latest album. Uh, just came out a couple of weeks ago. This is uh, called uh, Unfold. It's a double LP set on Editions Migo, the uh, European experimental label beautiful cover here um i was really blown away by this it's um yeah, a lot of people describe it as jazz it's almost